and welcome to Talk A Game Game is the review of the West Ham game. It finished 4-2. Unfortunately, that was the score of the ladies game against Plymouth today, so well done to them. But unfortunately, at Liberty Stadium, it finished Swansea City 0, West Ham 80 0. The third 0-0 in a row for us. And we're away to find out the thoughts of two other fellow Hammerchat.com members. I'm Gio from Hammerchat.com. We've got Charlie with me. Hello, Charlie. Hello, how are you? Um, not great, but we'll go into that in detail. Chris, thanks for joining me again. No problem. Chris, let's start with yourself. Were you disappointed to see Zerati get taken off out of all the players you could have taken off? Yes, and Song as well. Funny enough, afterwards, he, he, he just, Song had just made the pass of the match, and then he took him off. So, yeah, and Zerati looked like he was probably one of the few players who was going to make something happen. Song, Song was a fitness thing. He's not injured or that. He's just he's still not 100% fit. That's why he came off against Stoke as well. Um, so I assume that's why he came off again today, just to keep him fresh and stop him getting injured. Charlie, what was your thoughts overall in the first half? We did a live halftime show, which you can find on our channel. Just have a look or click subscribe and you'll get into your feed. But Charlie, first half, was that just as bad as anything we've seen over the last 18 months of being a West Ham fan? Attacking, yeah. I mean, you can tell that all of our injuries are attacking injuries because going forward, we're so uh, devoid. And defensively, we're still quite good. They're dominating us, but they're not creating any quality chances at all. Um, and that continued on in the second half as well. But attacking-wise, we're so bad. Like, there's so little going forward. So little. But the problem is, Charlie, we didn't dominate the middle of the park. That, that was our first three first-team players in the middle of the pitch with Kiati, Song and Noble. They barely strung passes together. Does that not concern you, Charlie? You said we did fine apart from the attacking side of it, but surely we should be controlling the middle third of the pitch as well then. We should, but those three are playing so close together that there's no space for them to string any passes together. The reason it works so well when there's two and then when there's two and then like Hyatt just in front of them is there's naturally a triangle to pass around. There's movement happening around them and there's naturally a triangle. Whereas when there's just three in a line, what they can't really do anything. That's why we looked a heck of a lot better in the second half when Kiate moved forward, because all of a sudden there was space to actually move around and pass around. It's a worry to me. It's not a worry because I understand why he's letting them just come onto us and contain because we are so good defensively that we can just stop teams from scoring like that. But we do at some point have to attack and the worry for me, at least at the moment, is that we can't. There's just nothing there to attack with, if you see what I'm saying. Chris, do you agree with that? Anything you want to say to that? I, I agree with his sort of um, tactical observation with the, the two and, and the one, you know, creating the triangle. They are... There are similarities between those those three in the middle, but it is a worry, going back to what you said, it's a worry that we're not controlling it. I, I, I didn't think we did improve that much in the second half, by the way. I don't think he knew what he was doing in terms of who to throw on where and, and, and what to do. I think it was a complete mishmash, actually. Yeah, I didn't I think we improved at all in the second half. If anything, I thought we, saw, we sat even deeper. Um, I thought in the first half our midfield was kind of on the halfway line, if you like. We're still being overpowered, but I thought they were sitting at the halfway line. The second half, I felt like our midfield was almost joining in with the defence. It's just sitting outside our own box, waiting for wave after wave to come. Um, it, it concerns me a lot that our midfield three barely strung passes together today. They, they should have been controlling that game. That Song, Kayate and Noble should have been... We went to... We just played Swansea City, who have got one point in their last six games. I don't care if they've just sat their manager. They're a team that cannot have any confidence. I know we don't have much because we haven't won in six. But we've only lost two of those and one of them was against Tottenham and the other one was against Watford who just tore Liverpool apart earlier. So they weren't bad defeats as such. Those three centre midfielders, they're not poor players. They're very good players and they've all got good reading of the game. They should have been ripping up that pitch at Liberty Stadium today and giving Antonio Zorati and Jelovic plenty of stuff to go on to go forward. I know what you're saying, Charlie. We didn't have a lot going forward. But they didn't get the ball to go forward. Zerati and Antonio barely had the ball to go forward. And when they did, the middle three, for me, didn't push up. They did not go and support. This is this is my point. This is why I'm saying we looked better when Kiate roamed forward. That's when we looked better. We didn't look better in the, as a whole in the second half. We were still as bad as we were. But when Kiate dared to go forward and sort of almost push into that same position Pyatt was in, that's when things started to happen and we actually started to create that space. That's the point I was making rather than we looked good in the second half because we didn't as a whole. Well, Charlie, I'm going to ask you, I asked Chris earlier about Sub and Zerati. I've said this on previous shows. I'm going to say it again. 
I think he's changing like for like far too much rather than changing shape. And he did it again today. The first half wasn't working. Everyone's sitting there saying, change something. We spoke at halftime about we need to change the shape. We need to do something. Charlie said we maybe need to go three behind Yelovich instead of two. We had to change something. But he takes off Zerati, puts on Valencia, keeps Valencia out wide left. And he keeps the same shape and it still doesn't work. And you almost think he's going to be standing there thinking, well, why, why is this not? Why is the change not work? Because we're... Ch I, I still think we're putting square pegs into round holes with some of the players we're playing, like Valencia and that. Charlie, do you think he start? Do you think his subs are questionable? He's he, let's let's be it, to be fair to him for a start. There is barely any attacking talent on the bench to begin with. Like you look at that bench and like Valencia is really the only out and out attacking player on there. You could argue Josh Collin would like to run forward, and you could argue Carl Jenkinson is barely a defender to begin with. But there's like not enough attacking talent on the bench to actually bring on. But I said at, in during the halftime show that I would have moved Zerati into the centre and brought on someone else on the wing, and I still think that was the right choice. Um, he, I completely 100% agree with you with what you're saying. He just he he seems to be stuck with the shape and doesn't want to change that. And I, I think it's caution. I know you disagree, but I think it's just caution that we don't want to, especially in a game where we were being dominated like we were today, one slip up and they would have scored. And I think it's just, he's too cautious in that sense. There have been other games where I've praised him for just lobbing people forward and going for it full blast. But I think he's he sort of seemed to have gotten this run of caution. And I think we need to do something to break out of that. Um, and hopefully the next game we'll do that. Well, I think it's ridiculous to be cautious because if we conceded today, there was no way we were going to make it 1-1. None at all. If they scored first, it was game over for me. I don't think we would have got back in it. As for your saying about the bench, Bilic picks the bench, no one else. It's, it's yeah, like his yeah. fault there's no attacking options on the bench. Before you say there's no other players, go the car under, under 21s. They're flying at the minute. And I know Samuel Sins had a big part of that and he's away alone. However, we're still... The, 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 it's a team game, as we know. The under twenty ones are flying. They've won what seven out of the last eight games or something. Um, those boys are buzzing. If they're going to keep winning and still not get a chance in the first team when we're in an injury crisis, when are they going to get their chance? Um, it's good to see them on the bench. But I actually like the fact he took Jenkinson on right wing and tried something different. I, I wish he did it sooner, if anything, because Jenkinson ha has got pace. He can cross it. He's got a decent enough shot on him. The only thing people have been questioning Jenkinson about this season is his defensive responsibilities. So putting him right wing takes that out of the game. So we'll see. Chris, you're not a fan of Yelvich. You've been having a look on the forum before you're coming on here. He was a talking point before the game. He's, he's still a talking point now, I suppose. Um, what's your thoughts on Yelvich, Chris, and the forums? <laughs> so, it's a bit of a dark comedy. It's like um, Keystone Cops at the end. Sorry, I'm telling you. I'm age there. Um, it was falling over. It it was no good. I mean, it's funny enough. The best two shots in the game were probably Valencia's, who was playing wide and had to drift in and do it, and the other one was Zerati, who had to drift in and do it. So no, I I, I think Yelovich is absolutely awful. You want to see the names he's being called at the moment, and it's it's not Yelovich, if you know what I mean. We've got um, yeah, sorry, I can't actually read that. Uh, we've Iron Man has said uh, Yelovich is a poor player. I can't read the other post. Um, Black Diamond. Terrible centre forward play by Jelovic. No point having on on the pitch again. Iron Man said we were very lucky to get a point today. Uh, Pale Rider, what can I say? Are you Fat Sam in disguise? Jellyfish has to be one of the worst signings we ever made. Even Fat Benny was quicker. So I mean, it's quite new market. Poor performance by pretty much everybody outside the back four and the keeper. Injuries don't help. But Billich did have. You know, I mean, he's making comparisons with Allardyce again. So, I mean, there seems to be a general consensus today, and I do think there's some mitigation with with the lack of players and the players we have on the injury list. But you're quite right, and, and as soon as you said that about the under 21s, I think of Janai Gordon, who's been in sensational form and looks really good. It's this insistence to play the target man when really we don't play a system that suits it. Far too isolated up top on his own. And the, the thing is, if you are going to be isolated and you are only going to get one or two opportunities, you better be a bloody good player. And what you don't want to do is fall over and sort of <laughs> kick the air and fall over the ball, which is, we, 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 had, we had a comedy scene at the end, let's be honest. Right, time for some positivity though. We're coming up to mid midway through the season. We're still four points off four spot. Let's not forget. We haven't won in seven. We've only lost two. 
Uh, we've had three clean sheets in a row, which was something we're struggling for at the start of the season. Uh, as Charlie's pointed out in this video, our defence looks solid as. Uh, for me, Ogbonna and Collins were fantastic today. I think Antonio did well. I think that's the three. That's the only three I can give praise to. Our keeper did nothing wrong saying that, but I don't think he had a lot to deal with, really, because of the back four. Um, Charlie, are you happy so far with the season overall, though? Yeah, I am. We've had, we've had a... A long run of badness, obviously, um, which is something that needs to be addressed. But I think overall, I think it's difficult not to be uh, happy with it. I mean, the wins we've had have been absolutely incredible. And, you know, as a, again, if we had this many injuries to key players in the past, we would be absolutely screwed and we would be down there. And yet we still are showing that sort of solid, solidarity and, def and just strength to continue, even though we are just drawing nil nils out of a stone we're still draw getting draws and that's important and when you look at the table although we've drifted slightly further away from the top four than we were previously we're still looking who's above us and not below us and i think that's huge especially with yeah, the well, well the next three games i think might determine whether we start we keep looking ahead or we do start looking below us and, and start looking over our shoulder because the results didn't go our way this weekend in other games uh, the teams at the bottom are starting to pick up Villa played well against Newcastle. That's our next opponents on Boxing Day. We'll be back next week with a preview of that game for you, where I'll be asking the people that's on, are we under pressure? We haven't won in seven now. We haven't scored in three games. Is there pressure on Village? We should have Lanzini back. We should hear more about Payet. January transfers around the corner. Got plenty to look forward to. Charlie, thank you for popping on. Thank you. Chris, thank you for popping on. Yeah, thank you. Take care. And come on to hammerschat.com, click on the forum, have a look, go on to the westhamway.co.uk, keep your eye on anything for the January transfer window. I've been Gio, that's been Charlie, that's been Chris, we've been trying to talk a good game. See you on hammerschat.com. <laughs>